Hello everyone, myself Vibhu. Today I'm going to discuss about some of the important science related questions, which basically appeared in the previous year uh, competitive exams like uh, central level and state level examinations. And this is my eighth session and my previous sessions we have discussed, uh, you know, the multiple questions also. Uh, so today I'm going to discuss about 35 to 40 questions. Uh, so let's see, maybe these questions may appear in our upcoming exams. So let's see the first question. most suitable material for the preparation of handles of cooking utensils option a polythene option b pvc option c nylon option d bakelite so here the first one polythene is basically used in the plastic bags and many other uh, uh, plastic items like uh, you know kids toys and all they will use polythene okay so in pvc is polyvinyl chloride okay so it is basically used as a doors nowadays instead of wooden doors or uh, it is used in the pipes also so one of the most important uh, plastic uh, material next one nylon is uh, used as a cloth material like plants uh, or uh, you know the jersey or any other cloth material basically used uh, from the nylon next come to the bakelite Bakelite is one of the material which is used as a handle for the uh, cooking utensils. Like in your house, uh, we have uh, cookers, right? Uh, their handle or uh, tawa handles or maybe gas stove or switches. All these handles are basically made up of bakelite. So here you can see the images also. This is very much familiar for you people. So you have seen this in your daily life. Okay, this is all made up of bakelite. It is a kind of material where it can, uh, you know, the tolerate up to 350 degrees Celsius of temperature. Okay, and it is an insulator where uh, it will not allow the heat or electricity to pass through it. Uh, so that's why we will use bakelite in all our, uh, uh, you know, the cooking utensils or vessels. Okay, everywhere as a handle. Okay. All right, so right answer for this question is Bakelite, option B. Question number two, conventional energy sources. Option A, exhaustible energy resources in limited quantity. Option B, inexhaustible energy resources in unlimited quantity. Option C, renewable energy resources in limited quantity. Option D, exhaustible energy resources in unlimited quantity. So conventional energy sources are the uh, sources where once you used it, it is done. You don't get it back. So for example, petroleum product, coal product, uh, kerosene, uh, petrol, diesel, LPG, gasoline, all are the conventional energy sources. Once you used it, that is over for that day, right? Uh, so the right answer for this question is exhaustible energy resources in limited quantity. They are in the limited quantity. That's why we are looking for alternative energy sources. So the right answer for this question is option A. Okay. They are able, you know, exhaustible energy resources means it is almost in the limited form or limited quantity. Option uh, next question three. Okay. The Two main properties of gold helps the goldsmiths to make ornaments. Okay, ornaments means, you know, uh, the basically in India, we, uh, you know, very much use gold uh, ornaments, right? So why gold, goldsmith choose that one? What are the major reasons? Let's see, option A, lustrous and ductile, option B, non-lustrous and uh, sonorous, option C, sonorous and malleability, option D, a good conductivity and sonorous. What is the meaning of lustrous? Let's see that first, then we'll see what is the answer. Lustrous means uh, when you rub the metal uh, or gold, uh, when you give the polish, it will give the shiny nature. When the light falls on it, it will shine. That property of the metal is called lustrous. And here ductility. Ductility means uh, where you can make the uh, gold into a uh, small, uh, wires or uh, you know the chains whatever the thin kind of shape you can give it so up to small you, you know you have seen the earrings or uh, rings right so nose rings 
uh, all that where they can make into small small uh, shapes or wire kind of stuffs right so it will be tolerable right so that property of the metal is called ductility okay so where you can make into a or draw into a thin wires non lustrous means where it will not uh, you know the shiny nature that is called non lustrous okay sonorous means when you hit with the hard uh, substance or hammer it will produces the sound so basically metals will produces the sound uh, that property of the metal is called sonorous example school bell or temple bell when you hit it it will produces the sound right that is called sonorous next here uh, option c says that sonorous as well as malleability malleability means when you hit it or you can draw into a thin sheets for example which uh, basically the plates uh, which are used in our houses right that is a very thin sheet or spoons all that you can draw into a thin sheet right that property is called malleability all the metals have the property of malleable okay next option d says that good conductivity obviously gold is a good conductor of uh, heat as well as electricity but we cannot use in our uh, uh, you know electronic circuits or electric devices uh, why because it is very costly we know that you know present rate of gold is almost 4500 rupees right okay so it is a good conductor obviously and come to the sonorous i told you it will produce as a sound right but right answer for this question is option a it is lustrous means it is a shiny nature as well as ductility so the right answer for this question is option a fourth one most abundant proteins in animals option a trypsin option b hemoglobin option c collagen option d insulin here option a trypsin and option uh, d insulin are the two important products which comes from the pancreas which is there in our stomach okay so which helps in the digestion of the food as well as insulin helps in the sending of glucose to different body parts or different cells in our body okay both will be produced by pancreas and come to the hemoglobin hemoglobin is one of the most important part Uh, of our body which is there in the blood the red color of the blood is because of the hemoglobin okay what is the function of the hemoglobin what hemoglobin basically do it will carry the oxygen from one part of the body to the different corners of the body also it will bring back the carbon dioxide from different part of the body and it will try to remove from the body okay so that is basically hemoglobin so hemoglobin is there in our blood so you can see that it is uh, you know red in color so this is all you know hemoglobin all right next one collagen collagen is one of the uh, important protein amino acids it is made up of amino acids it is there in our body okay it is one of the most abundant protein available in the human body okay so the right answer for this question is option c collagen okay fifth one identify the non perishable food among the following option a milk products where milk products will be there for hardly you know like butter milk butter milk will be there for 2 3 days okay where ghee you can keep it for little bit more longer time uh, that also you have to keep it in the proper area and you have to maintain it properly then only you can uh, store it for longer period of time vegetables hardly 2 3 days uh, or else you have to keep in the refrigerators uh, then you can store it for at least for one week but you don't get the fresh ness of that uh, vegetables right okay next egg hardly we can keep it for 10 to 15 days then it will become rotten uh, you cannot keep it for longer period of time but comes to the option d food grains which you can keep it for longer longer period of time where you have to store in a particular air tight bottles uh, the plastic bottles okay where you have to before storing you have to keep it in the sunlight you have to dry it properly then you can keep it for a long period of time so the right answer for this question is option d food grains 
the you know images I have attached here. You can see the images, right? You people are very much familiar with this. So the right answer for this question is option D. Sixth one, an example of artificial ecosystem. Option A, forest. Okay. Uh, option B, uh, ocean. Option C, a zoo. Option D, grassland. Here, option A, forest. Option B, ocean. And option D, grassland. All are, you know, the God made or it is all our natural things, right? Where we are utilizing it. So they are not artificial, they are natural, okay, god gift things, right? And comes to the zoo, zoo is basically part of a forest only, but it is done by human beings, okay, with our intelligence, with our all scientific knowledge, uh, by using the technology, uh, you know, the zoo is uh, particularly made up of, and here I have attached one uh, image, uh, here, Banerugatta Biological Park, which is located in our Bangalore, uh, you know, National Biological Park, right? Okay, this is man-made. So I can uh, say the right answer for this question is option C, okay? Zoo. Seventh one, this is an unit of electric charge is. Okay, what is electric charge? Electric charge is the basic property of any body. Every body has charge. I can simply say that it is the basic property of the body. There are two types of charges are there. One is positive charge, another one is the negative charge. So options A, ampere, option B, old, option C, coulomb, option D, ohm. So option A is ampere. It is the uh, unit of current. Current is basically uh, measured with the unit of ampere and volt is the unit of voltage or potential difference or EMF. All these are measured with volts. Okay. And uh, ohm option D is a, a SI unit of resistance. Okay. So resistance is the opposition for the flow of charges. It is uh, measured or I mean SI unit is ohm. And come to the option C, coulomb. Coulomb is the unit of, I mean SI unit of charge. It is a scientist name. So coulomb is basically represented with alphabet C. So the right answer for this question is option C, coulomb is the unit of electric charges. Eighth one, identify the correct statement among the following with respect to, okay, a small g and capital G. What is small g? Small g is acceleration due to gravity. Okay, 9.8 meter per second square. Okay, that is the value of G. Okay, or else I can round it up to 10 meter per second square. Okay, the okay, and come to capital G is a uh, uh, universal gravitational constant. Uh, the value is uh, 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 11 Newton meter square per uh, kg square. Okay, so I can say that G equals F r square divided by m square this is the formula for g g stands for universal gravitational constant and this is the value of g remember this 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 11 newton meter square per kg square here newton is the unit of force meter is the unit of length and kg is the unit of mass okay all right so here the options are G is constant and G varies. Option B, G is constant and G is varies. Option C, both are constant. Option D, both are variable. So, but right answer for this question is option A, G is constant, but small g, acceleration due to gravity is varies. With, uh, varies with altitude, height, okay? So, all right, if the height increases, this G decreases. So, the right answer for this question is option A. 
ninth one among the following identify the si unit of frequency and wavelength respectively option a meter hertz option b decibel comma meter option c hertz comma meter option d candela and decibel so let's see uh, what is decibel here decibel is the si unit of sound sound is measured with decibels okay and here meter is a unit of length or wavelength whatever may be okay and hertz is a scientist name and it is uh, basically represented with symbol hz it is a si unit of frequency and the frequency is measured in hertz okay and here one more in the option d you can see the new word like candela candela is a unit of luminous intensity okay so we will represent it with cad also okay candela uh, so this is a uh, one more uh, unit what is luminous intensity luminous intensity means if i say that there is a candle light uh, that uh, candle how much light it will produce us for that one unit sun how much light it is produce us that tube light how much uh, light it will produce us to represent uh, or to uh, you know uh, the study that Uh, to identify that to calculate that we are using one unit that is called candela so candela is the unit of luminous intensity decibel is the unit of sound uh, but here they have given frequency and wavelength so in the first option a says meter option um, in the same option hertz is there but they are just you know the shuffled here but according to this i have to choose the option c the frequency is measured in hertz and wavelength is measured in uh, you know meter so the right answer for this question is option c hertz sin meter okay so the right answer for ninth question is option c we'll move to the next question Tenth one, the metal used as a thin protective layer upon iron in the process of galvanization. What is galvanization? Galvanization is the process of protecting iron from rusting. Okay, how the painting is re required in the same way the galvanization or uh, is the you know one of the scientific method where basically you know the iron is coated with particular metal as a layer. uh like a sweater okay where it will uh, protect the iron from the rusting so option a gallium so gallium is a uh, you know semiconductor uh which is basically used in the manufacturing of uh, led bulbs uh, it is used in the space stations uh you know the thermometer they will use gallium okay and come to the all aluminum we already know that aluminum is a good conductor of electricity uh, it is used in the pipes uh, or it is used in the you know the electric wires okay to carry the electricity from the power st uh, generation station to the where it is used uh, i mean say i can say that long range electricity uh, transport uh, facilities it will provide uh and come to the silver we already know that it is used as an uh, ornament and it is co uh, costlier and uh, silver is one of the most uh, you know the conducting material uh, it is but we cannot use silver because it's very expensive and come to the zinc zinc is a metal which is used in the galvanization process remember it is one of the most important question so zinc is used as a protective layer in the galvanization process uh, you know the galvanization of the iron so galvanization is basically protecting the iron from uh, rusting okay so where it will increase the lightness or ruggedness of the iron all right okay so the right answer for this question is option c 11th one the parasitic flat worm that is dwelling in the liver of sheep okay option a tape worm option b planaria option c is liver fluke option c uh, pilarial uh, worm 
okay so here uh, the right answer for this question is liver fluke okay which is there in the ship okay uh, it's uh, it is available uh, or it will stay or it is dwelling in the livers uh, of the ship stomach so basically it will stay there and parasitic means it will depend on the other animals or the living uh, uh, body uh, for their survivalness those are called parasitic or parasites okay and come to the planaria planaria will be there in the uh, pure water okay or fresh water you can see that planaria so that's why we will say that you have to boil the water uh, before uh, use it okay next one is uh, uh, palarial uh, worm it is there in the our body you should be very careful uh, okay so human limb system it will be there okay so you should be very careful with this so it don't give any symptoms it will be there for up to 30 years also in the human body okay so but right answer for this question is uh, liver fluke and how about the tapeworm tapeworm is another uh, you know uh, worm which is there inside the uh, animal body like uh, i can say that cow or buffalo or which basically grazes which basically direct eat the uh, green leaves or the grass okay in their stomach it will be there the tapeworm okay but right answer for this question is liver fluke which is there in the ship liver okay all right next question option 12 i mean question number 12 quasi occur disease is caused due to deficiency of option a protein option b vitamin option c carbohydrates option d fat so quasi occur is a kind of uh, disease which comes from the deficiency of the protein whatever the food item we are taking inside if there is a deficiency then it will leads to the quasi occur quasi occur where you can see the images i have attached here where the muscles will not grow where the body will not become taller where the stomach will be bulged out where the leg or the finger or the hand size will become thinner and thinner the hair loss will be there okay uh, where healthy human body will not be there that is the condition of quasi occur okay so it basically causes due to the deficiency of the protein so we should eat the food which must contain the protein next option b vitamin vitamin deficiency causes many health issues like uh, scurvy beriberi all these are uh, you know the uh, rickets um, but these are the night blindness all this will cause us because of the vitamins so whatever the food item we eat that should contain the vitamins and come to the carbohydrates so carbohydrate is one of the most important thing in our body so if carbohydrate uh, deficiency causes will uh, you know the headache giddiness uh, okay where the immunity will be drop out uh, because of the carbohydrates and come to the fat fat is very important in our body where the rashes will come in the skins okay allergy will happen uh, where the hair fall will happen the dry skin will be there so that all because of the fat deficiency but come to this question okay the quasi occur uh, diseases caused because of the protein deficiency all right we'll move to the next question 13th one excess amount of uh, following mineral in water responsible for yellow or brown strains on teeth so you, you might have seen you know the many people are suffering this kind of uh, teeth right okay it is not because whether they are not brushing or not it is because of the kind of mineral which is excess in their drinking water that is the fluorine so the right answer for this question is fluorine okay so iodine will not cause this kind of uh, diseases if uh, there is a deficiency of uh, iodine in our body then it will leads to the goitra the chlorine is a chemical which is basically used to purify the drinking water or uh, purify the you know the swimming pool water 
bromine is a chemical which is not at all related here so the right answer for this question is option b the fluorine or fluoride which causes i mean if it is excess in the drinking water where the decay of the teeth will take place where the teeth will turn into browny yellowish color okay so the right answer for this question is option c next one 14th one incomplete combustion of fuel leads to formation of or option a carbon monoxide option b carbon uh, dioxide option c chlorofluorocarbon option d hydrogen sulfide sulfide right okay so but here incomplete combustion uh, basically it is in the factory uh, which uh, you know leads to the formation of carbon monoxide okay maybe because of the factories uh, where you burn the plastics where you don't uh, you know the burn properly then they will release carbon monoxide so the right answer for this question is carbon monoxide option a and how about carbon dioxide carbon dioxide when we breathe out from our body carbon dioxide will go out where the plants will utilize carbon uh, dioxide for their food production so carbon dioxide is good for plants and come to chlorofluorocarbon cfcs we basically call it as a cfc which releases from the refrigerators uh, air fresheners or uh, you know uh, air coolers okay so from air conditioners uh, those will produce a cfcs which causes the depletion of the ozone layers okay next hydrogen sulfide it is also a chemical which basically releases from the uh, industry so option d okay it is a harmful uh, substance which will release us to the atmosphere because of the industries or the uh, you know the bomb blast or uh, crackers from that kind all it will release us but right answer for this question is option a carbon monoxide next one uh, fifth question is body breaks up into several fragments and each fragment starts to live as a new individuals this is option a budding option b uh, fragmentation option c uh, regeneration option d binary fusion uh, we'll see what is budding budding will be take place in the uh, hydra okay where the one part okay for example okay so where the body will be bulged out this part of the body will be detached and will live as a individual body okay that is called as budding okay budding is example for asexual reproduction okay it will basically we can see in the hydra okay next one is regeneration regeneration basically takes place for example uh, lizard is there if its tail is uh, broken uh, if you cut the tail uh, so still it can uh, grow right uh, so that is called regeneration okay next one is binary fusion is another uh, d option which is uh, a sexual reproduction which we can see in the amoeba euglena or paramecium okay where the after uh, some time the body of the amoeba uh, will be grow into the another new body and it will be detached okay so that is called binary fission but come to the option b fragmentation fragmentation we can see in the lichens or uh, fungi uh, where uh, if you break the body into multiple pieces each body uh, will grow into a new individual and it will start its life so you can see the fungi here okay which you can see in the water where the water is uh, staying for long period of time okay where it will not flow those kind of waters where this kind of uh, algae is uh, you can see okay so fragmentation is the best example for uh, you know this uh, question so the right answer for this question where the body if you break the body into several multiple pieces it will grow or it will become a new individual that is fragmentation okay so the right answer is option b budding will take place in hydra uh, binary fusion will take place in amoeba euglena paramecium remember this 
16th one the process of separation of light into its component color okay so while it uh, passes through a medium called option a reflection option b refraction option d dispersion uh, option c dispersion and option d total internal reflection so what is reflection this is we have discussed in my previous videos also reflection is the process when the light falls on any uh, smooth surface it will bounce back for example when the light falls on the mirror or the steel plate it will bounce back that process is called reflection option b refraction refraction is the process where there is a change in the path of the light when the light passes from one transparent medium to another transparent media or let me say that when it transfer passes from a uh, rarer medium to denser media or denser media to rarer media there is a change in the path of the light that process is called refraction okay so let me i can simply say that the bending of the light while traveling from one medium to another medium next one total internal reflection or tir okay this is one of the most important uh, phenomenon we can see in the nature uh, okay uh, so mirage formation okay tir which is used in the optical fibers uh, so remember this it is the one of the hot question we can see in the most of the question paper tir is the principal which is used in the optical fibers optical fibers are used in the communication systems okay but come to the option c dispersion what is dispersion dispersion is have attached here one image when the white light passes through a prism it is going to split up into its constituent colors remember sunlight is made up of seven colors but when it passes through a prism it is going to split into its seven component colors that process of splitting of white light is called dispersion okay and here one more image i have attached here okay rainbow formation okay this is when the light passes through the prism it is going to split into seven colors this is the artificial method where we can do in the lab but this is the rainbow formation is the natural one when the sunlight passes through the rain droplets each rain droplet act like a prism and the white light is going to split up into its constituent colors okay so the right answer for this question is option c the dispersion okay so dispersion is a, a process where the light is going to split into its constituent colors next question the minimum velocity of the spacecraft to escape from the earth's gravitational force must be option a 112 km per hour option b 11.2 km per second option c 1.12 km per second option d 0.112 km per second so what is escape uh, uh, speed or escape velocity what is the minimum velocity we required see whenever we are sending the spacecraft or rocket to the outer space it should go with a minimum velocity or else it will come back and fall on the somewhere on the earth right so to throw out of from the earth atmosphere or earth's gravitational force everywhere the gravitational force is there right whatever you throw it will come back but whatever you throw or whatever you project from the earth it should not come back it should go out of the earth atmosphere for that you have to project or you have to send uh, an object or spacecraft or rocket with certain minimum velocity that minimum velocity we will call it as a escape velocity if you project or if you launch the uh, spacecraft or any body with that much uh, velocity then only it will uh, move it Uh, outer uh, out of the our earth surface that is 11.2 km per second so the right answer for this question is option b okay next one okay so till now we have discussed almost uh, 17 main questions uh, but uh, this 17 questions uh, contain multiple options 
so i have explained many options also so you got a lot of ideas okay if you really like this uh, video kindly share and subscribe and also post your feedbacks to improve my upcoming videos and thanks for your time thanks for watching okay take care all the best